Okay, so what we're going to do now is take a look at how do we work with world space and local space when we're dealing with an object that is in world space and an object that is in a local space. Meaning that we want to take a look at an object that is in world space and what happens to it when we switch it to a local space. So what I want you to do is click on this object, press the shift key down, click on this one this one and this one do X and a delete. So we only want to have this object that is operating in a local space. Okay, so go ahead and click this, press the G key and just move it to the side. Go ahead and click on this object and do Alt G to reset its uh, location and do Shift C to place the 3D cursor in the uh, center. Now what you're going to do is go under File, do Save As and let's save this as Bone Concepts 3 dot blend. Okay, so what I want you to do is having this object selected, go to the Constraints tab, and over here you're going to do Copy Location. Click on this eyedropper tool and click on this object. Now you know what World Space and World Space does. It's the most simplest concept to understand because it's just using the global coordinate system to match where uh, the target object is to the owner, right? So it doesn't matter if you press the R key to rotate any of these. Okay, so what I want you to do is uh, go ahead and click on uh, the object that has to constrain and just press the S key to scale a bit bigger so we can see the difference. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to say that the target object obviously has a parent, so let's evaluate that in a local space, okay? Now, we can see why this object is coming over here is because it's being evaluated in world space. So when you click on this object, press the G key and bring it to its center in its local space, this object, of course, is going to come to its center in world space, right? Now over here, if we click on its X value, we know that this object can only move along the X axis in its local coordinate system and the Z axis. So when this object moves in its local space along the Z, this object is going to move along its global Z. So if we click on this object, press the R key to rotate. The rotation doesn't matter. Here I just want you to see that when you move this on Z, or X, this is going to obviously move along its a global Z and X. This is a very straightforward concept to understand. Now the issue here is that how is this object when it's rotating, when it moves along its X axis, how do we see this information on this object? Again, we can just put a pointing device to see this, but technically you can just click on this object go to rotation, get the rotation from this object and just say that, okay, the rotation that's happening in local space, bring that into world space. So now when we click on this X, you will see that this is going to move along its X, this is going to move along its Z. It doesn't matter how you rotate it, right? It's always going to work. But that's not what we want. We want a pointing device to understand how these concepts work when you're not interested in rotating this object just the way this object is. So having this object selected, do Shift S and do Cursor to select it. It'll bring the 3D cursor on this object. Do Shift A and add arrows. Press the S key to scale this a little bigger over here. Now we're going to tell this object, which again is only existing in the world space, to copy the location of this object. Okay, that's the first thing. So if you click on this object and just move it, this pointing device will follow where this object goes. Okay, now we're going to tell this pointing device to get the rotation from this object. So this is easy. Let's just collapse this. Let's just go to copy uh, rotation over here. We're just going to select on uh, this object and of course say bring the rotation from local space back to world space. Remember, this object has no idea what this object is doing. It only knows about itself. So we have to treat it as a separate object. It exists in world space. 
Now when we click on this object, press the R key to rotate, we can see that where this is actually pointing. When we click on Z, you'll see that how this object is moving along this Z and moving along its X. Now go under File and do Save. Okay, so you've seen how that works. So what I want you to do is go ahead and click on this object and press the H key to hide it. You can do Alt H to bring it back later. Just click it and hide it so it doesn't get in our way. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and click on this object and turn off its constraints and do Alt R and G and S to reset everything. Now press the S key to scale it a bit and press the R key to just rotate it. Now go ahead and click on this object and do Alt R G S to reset its location, rotation and scale. Go ahead and zoom in. Now what I want you to notice over here is that this object has no parent. So when you click on its X value over here, it only knows how to move along the global X axis and the global Z axis. Of course, it's going to be the same thing for the Y. Now when we click on this object, this object has a parent. So this object, when you move along its X axis or a Z axis, it can only move along its local coordinate system. It is not possible to move this object along the global X axis. Blender's not going to let you do this because this object is stuck in its local coordinate system. Okay? Now go ahead and click on this object and turn on the constraints. Now over here, we're actually doing the same thing. See, it's all about this object as to how it looks at the target object and how you want to use that information. So over here, we're saying the same thing. We're saying that the owner object should evaluate itself in wall space because it has no parent. And the target object should evaluate itself in a local space because it has a parent. So this is talking about the coordinate systems that these two objects are using. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is switch this to world space. So we already know how this works. This is very straightforward. But it's just using the global coordinate system to find out where this object is and giving that information to this object. Now the question is, what happens is that if we force this object that only works in the world coordinate system and say to evaluate yourself in a local space, you'll see that this object is going to basically rotate over here. So let's understand what's going on over here. So when we said to evaluate in your local space for the target object, we knew that this object has a local coordinate system that it uses to move along the X and move along the Z. But this object does not have a local coordinate system. So when you force this object to evaluate itself in the local space, what Blender is going to do is give this object a local coordinate system based on it's a local Z and X axis and basically attach it to it. So to see where this local coordinate system is, we're going to do a shift C to place the 3D cursor over here. We're basically going to expose it. Now do shift A and add arrows and press the S key to scale this a bit. Right? Now all we have to do is to tell this object to copy the rotation of this object because that's how the local coordinate system is. So now you'll see that this is making a lot more sense, right? If we click on this and do Alt R to reset its rotation, you can see that what's happening here is that when we are saying the target object evaluate yourself in world space, Blender's looking at the target object using the global coordinate system and saying that, okay, well, if you take a look at it, how far is this object away from the center of the 3D grid? So here you can see that it's to the left on the X axis. And if you draw a perpendicular line from its origin, it's above here on the Z axis, right? Now, when you click on this object to see what's going on, when you actually press the R key, you'll see that the entire 
local coordinate system is moving. So we're going to rotate it like this to understand this. Now when we go back to the grease pencil and draw a line on its x-axis, just like this, right? You can see that it's the same thing. This is showing the same thing, a perpendicular line, right? Do you see how this is working? So this local coordinate system is invisible when you force it like this. This is how this works. This is why when you press the R key, it behaves this way because it's always going to keep that same distance and it's basically rotating the entire local coordinate system. That's how that works. So keep this in mind. We're going to now remove the grease pencil. Now we're going to do Alt H to bring this pointing device back. Now the question is that how do we tell this pointing device to point in the direction where when we press the R key on this object, when we click on X, to move correctly. So here what we have to do is take into account how both of these objects are rotating. So go ahead and remove this rotation. So the first thing that we're going to do is to copy rotation and get the rotation value of this object. Remember, this object has no idea what this object is talking about. It's a separate object that has no parent that uses the global coordinate system. So here we're first copying the rotation as we see it in world space. That's pretty straightforward. Now we need to take into account the rotation of this object. Go ahead and do copy rotation and copy the rotation, right? Now here we're going to have to click on offset. Remember how offset works? It adds the values on top of the copied uh, rotation. So right now the way the constraint stack works is that this is overruling this constraint. Now when we click on offset what it's basically going to do is first fire this off, get the rotation values from this object and only add the offset values based on how this object is rotated. So when we click on this object, do Alt-R to reset its rotation, you can see that when we click on X, this is going to move according to this X and uh, this Z. Now, why did we leave this at world space? Because if you click on this object, we're right now evaluating this object in world space. So when we look at this, we want to know how is this uh, pointing in world space. That's the reasoning behind this. Okay, so that information is coming back into this object's uh, local space based on its world space. Now you'll notice that what happens when we switch this to local space? We're evaluating both of these objects in local space. This is very easy. Once we've exposed this, right, you can see that this object is to the right on X and on Z. So this object is going to do the same thing. See, if we move it to the center, it behaves the same exact way. Now, when it comes to this, now we have to say that, okay, since we are evaluating you in local space, go ahead and bring that rotation information from local space back into world space. Now, when we click on this and click on uh, Z, you'll see that this is going to point exactly to how this is pointing in a local space. And now we can click on this object, press the R key and move it because we can see how the world coordinate system works. So if we just align it exactly like this, right, to how this is pointing, you can see that how this is working. See, it's the same thing. That's pretty straightforward. Now what I want you to do is to go ahead and switch this back to world space. So when we do that, we know that we have to click on this pointing device and switch this back to world space, right? Because it's going to appear on the left, just like how this object is appearing on the left, okay? Now, Go ahead and click on this object and switch this back to a local space and click on this and switch this back to local space. So this is pretty straightforward. Now the question is that, okay, well, if we look at this object, since this object only knows how to operate in its uh, local coordinate system, when we click on this X, 
right? If this moves along its X, you can see that this object is also moving along its X. And if we do Z, this object is also moving along its Z. So if we press the R key to rotate, click on this, and now do X, you can see that it goes along X and it goes along a Z. Right? It doesn't matter how we rotate this object, it doesn't matter how we rotate this object. It will always work. Now go ahead and click on this object and now do world space. Now this is going to get a bit tricky to understand. Now of course I'm going to press the R key to get this out of the way and push it over here. Now when you look at this and click on X, you'll see that it's actually moving diagonally in world space, right? Because this object cannot move along the global X axis. It can only move along its local X axis, so it's moving diagonally. So this object is doing the same thing, right? It's moving diagonally over here because that information is coming from world space back into local space. So how do we see where this object is moving according to its local x-axis and z-axis? Here we're just going to do shift A and add uh, the single arrow and press the S key to scale this a bit. Now we're going to tell this object to copy the location of this object so it attaches itself to it. Remember this is right now representing the z-axis. So here in this case what we have to do is we have to do copy the rotation of uh, this object first and of course do local to world now we have to go over here to copy rotation and take into account this guy's rotation so this is fine of course we have to click on offset right now when you click on this and press the R key to reset its rotation you can see that how this Z is aligned to this Z and this Z is aligned to this Z, right? If we go this way or go this way, that works. But we don't want this to rotate when we are rotating this because this thing really belongs to this object just like this thing belongs to this object. So to fix that, what we have to do is actually add another copy rotation and now go ahead and get the rotation again. Over here, we have to do offset on this. Okay, so now when we click on this, when we press the, uh, actually when we press the G key, you can see that how this is aligned to its Z, but this is no longer aligned to its Z. Okay, it's still rotating. So the only way to stop this from happening is that we have to do invert on this to stop it. Okay, now when we uh, click over here and move along its uh, Z axis, You'll notice that this is showing how this needs to move. See how this in world space is angled? So according to this, this is going to be angled. Now this is moving along Z. So here we're going to actually represent the X axis. All we have to do is shift a D to duplicate it, right click to cancel. Now we need to rotate this. So the only way to rotate this is we have to click on offset on this, press the R key to rotate and type in 90. And here I'm just going to do the minus sign and enter. So now you can see that when we click on the X, it moves along the X and it moves along the Z. Very straightforward. Okay, now we're going to switch this to local space. So if we switch this to local space, we know that we have to click on the pointing device over here and uh, keep this at a local space, right? We can press the R key and rotate it over here. This is fine. And over here on this, we have to do the same thing. Do a local space and a local space. Now you'll see it doesn't matter how you rotate this or you rotate this. When you click on this and move along the Z, it will move along the Z and it will move along the X. Okay, and that's it. Now go ahead and do file. Do And just let's just save this file. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.